Okay, I'm bringing in a second texture fill because my first one, when it added onto my image, you know, it gave me these these little dots like it was printed on an old printer or something. This is a, a more generic general texture fill, like old paper. And I'll go ahead and go to my flatten color, select the emptiness of the outside, and then just delete that from that texture fill so it's only on the spot illustration. You see that. I can actually, we talked about Gaussian blur as a filter because this was such a tiny, tiny image file for the texture fill, it gets so soft when I made it full resolution that I can actually bring that back by going to sharpen and smart sharpen under filter. And for something like this, this can work pretty well. I can increase the radius. And what smart sharpen does is it just detects edges where things are darker than a 50% a contrast. So you see that sharpened it up a little bit, gave me some definition. And now I can pick my blending mode that will work with my colors. And I want this to lighten it. There we go. Pin light works well for that. And then I'm going to use opacity to dim that through. So that gives me a little bit more visual interest in those images in my coloring selections. I can take the opacity down on the dissolve. Yeah, I still like it. So I'm going to still keep those random marks. So now in my color, I have all this stuff going on. The other thing left to show you is what's called color holds. And there's another thing you can do with your overall color layer. You can add gradients to it. If I make a duplicate to it, I'll do it on gray. I can do effects just like I did to my texture fills. I can do that to my full combined color and I can put a gradient over all of it. This is all just ways to play with full spectrum color. So you can see what that gradient did. And it looks really subtle, but it's actually incredibly effective because look, it, it makes purple and pink and yellow like as a gradient through all of the image. So it helps to bring things together. Without it, it looks just kind of flatter and bulkier, even with the texture fills, which also help to bring it together. So it's just playing with all these different options. Sometimes you really have to simplify them, and I always tend to overdo them when demoing, right? All right. So that's a gradient. Yeah, and I'm actually, I like that. All right, next. What if we play with, we've stayed in the sandwich, right? We've had the white bread on the bottom, then lots of coloring options in between, and then the black line art on top. So that's what my coloring looks like. That's what's spread onto my white bread. And I could even at any time, like turn off everything, except all my color layers I want to keep. And I can say, hold down option and say layer merge visible to then put them all together onto one thing again. Right, so now it's all on one layer. I can duplicate that. I can try different blending modes on top of itself like multiply, for instance, to deepen everything if I think everything got too light. And on that, that one full duplicate layer, I 
I can do little spot touches. I can use my clone stamp. Remember that? And all of this is still behind my um, line art. So it's all safe to play with because my line art is keeping everything clean. So I can steal some of these textures, paint them in, get those really subtle kind of blues in there, but keep them more subtle wherever I want. And this now has soft edged, hard edged, duotone, full spectrum. And a few of the flat colors are still in there. Just realizing you can really push it in so many directions. All right, what's next? I've got the sandwich. Now I can play with color holds, things that go on top of the black line art. So let me save my work. I haven't done that for a while. And to do a color hold, one thing you can do is simply do layer styles to your line art. Like here is an outer glow effect, which works pretty well, but it's not affecting the black lines. But if I add, let's say, a color overlay to my vector lines, all of a sudden I have a color hold. And I can do that with a flat color like this, which has kind of an interesting look. Not so much on gray, but on black, that's going to help. Right. And on white, it's going to look kind of interesting. But if I think that that color is a little, it's not dark enough, maybe instead of filling it with a color overlay, turn that off for the moment, I'll fill it with a gradient overlay. But this gradient overlay is a little too colorful and crazy, so let's change this up. Let's go from a dark towards the warm back to a dark. Maybe you can customize all of these gradients fully. I want you to understand the gradient tool so you can use it. I need that dark in the middle. I need to spread that out, maybe darken this one. Maybe put it more in the blues, purples, a little darker still. See, so now I got some interesting color in the line art. And it's not all black. These are like variations, chromatic, chromatic grays that are just very dark. I can always put color overlay over the top of that, but then take its opacity way down. So it kind of tints everything. Just a little bit. Just like how the blacks for this image are almost like a dark blue. That can often happen with printing too. I like what that does to the NLC. Now that's on my vector. So what if I want to change colors on top or put stuff on top of the vector black? What if I want, basically, I'm just going to do a little compositing here. If I want to steal this eye effect just as is. I'm just going to duplicate that or copy it. And then anything that goes as a special effect on top of your line art, that's like an olive in a toothpick on top of the black bread at the top of the sandwich. That is a special effect in a color hold. So I just pasted that in, brought it in. There it is. And then I can erase away from it. I can sharpen it. Right? Nice and impactful. I'll use a, actually, I'll just use a soft edged eraser here. Pretty small. And just bite away from the edges. So it feels like it's floating there. Now that's a little strong. Maybe I take that opacity down. 
Or maybe I change its layer style. But this is a color hold. This is like a golden lasso, like over the top of my black. Then I can maybe give it a glowing effect, an outer glow. And it will affect everything. Leave it nice and soft. And I can actually change that gradient. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, what if I want to use that in the other eye? Well, I can just duplicate it, Command J, flip it. This is why we do compositing first. Scale it down and move it over. Maybe warp it a little. So really, once you get to special effects of coloring, you do whatever you want. You can play with your adjustments. You can play with the hue saturation, change the whole hue a little bit. I feel they're a little intense. Creepy. All right. What about glints on the armor? These can be color hold special effects on top of your black line art. I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm just going to draw this with my lasso. Just little stars where I think the armor should glint. I'm going to hold down shift and do a few of them. One right here where the line art breaks. One here at the points. It's easy to overdo them, of course. One here at the edge. Maybe one here on the beak. Honestly, the more you do them, the less effect they have, but I want you to know how to do all these things. Then I'm going to fill those with white. These little star shapes I made on a new layer. So then, just as they are, you know, those are color holds even though they're just white shapes, but they're cutting and held over the black line art. Clink, 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 clink. And then just like I did with the eyes, if I wanted to add a glow effect, I'm going to show you something. I can move the effect between layers like that. But I can also right click and copy a layer style and then paste it onto a new layer. Sorry, not a layer style. Copy. Is it? No, it is. Yeah, copy layer. Oh, I said clear layer style. You want copy layer style. And then you can right click and paste the layer style to duplicate it. But that doesn't mean I can't change it. on the copy, I like making it bigger so that those, those highlights really glow. And if I think that they're too sharp, I can always go to filter and Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, take a little bit of their edge off. Like so. If I think I need more of those, though I don't think I do, I can duplicate it and Transform them, flip them, flip them vertically. Now I've just got stars to put wherever I want. Do that again, duplicate. Flip, this time I'll flip them horizontally. Move them down. 